Hey, Adam, welcome to the show. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Well, my name is Adam O'Dell. I work for a company in Kansas City, Missouri called Armstrong Transport. I've uh, been doing this for about four years now, and uh, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Yeah. I joined the military when I was 17 and uh, spent 12 years in the United States Army. Uh, after that, I took a couple different roles um, and then transitioned over into the sales position here. So, What was the motivation for the Army? Um, I just felt the, the need to serve my country. Uh, that was back when the war just, you know, was kind of in the height, the height of the war. So there was a, a big push for, you know, more volunteers um, and it just felt like something that I needed to do. So did it help you with the transition to sales? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it taught me a lot about diversity. Uh, it taught me a lot about, you know, how other people have different backgrounds and ways to navigate. And it taught me a lot about leadership. Um, I actually was promoted in the military up to a leadership role and uh, it really honed my skills, uh, taught me a lot. And how'd you get into sales? Um, so I was working for a, a large retailer um, and I was interested in transitioning over into something new. Uh, I wanted something with more work-life balance. Yeah. And um, I also, uh, I was in a management role uh, in that retail environment and I was putting 90 hours a week in and I, I was salary. So the, the payoff definitely was, was not there. So uh, I wanted something where I could, uh, you know, increase my, my own fortune and, you know, just, you know, grow as a person. And yeah. I felt like sales was definitely the place to do that. So retail's pretty hard, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It can, it can be, it can yeah. be. I did it um, in, in high school and the, the hours suck, the pay sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Other than that is great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You do get to deal with people. Did, did that help you develop uh you know, your interpersonal skills, retail? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it taught me a lot on how to deal with the public. You know, yeah. the, the military really kind of geared me up for the leadership aspect of things, but then dealing with the public, that's, that's completely different, you know, to uh, learn me how to de-escalate a lot of situations. Uh, <laughs> taught me how to, uh, you know, be a little bit more political, I guess. Yeah. So. Well, which people were angrier, the people at Retail or the people at war? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say the retail. I would say really? the retail. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <know. laughs> yeah. You, get, you get some pretty irate people that show up. So yeah. You don't have your receipt, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you sell today? Uh, I'm in the transportation uh, industry. So I set up shipping and receiving for companies all across the United States. Um, anytime there's a, a semi that's needed to load material, um, that's pretty much what I do. I um, set everything up uh, from finding the truck to tracking it uh, during transit. And then I continue through the end process, making sure it's all delivered and safe and secure. And do you get much inbound or is it a lot of outbound selling? Uh, definitely a lot of outbound. Yeah. Um, and transportation, there's so many people right now, especially that are um, trying to get into this industry and not a lot of them know what they're doing. So they kind of make a bad name for a lot of sales guys in the industry. And they, uh, so there's, there's way more outbound than there is inbound. Yeah. And who do you call on? Typically, it's the, the transportation manager, uh, the shipping person. Uh, occasionally, you'll talk to like a COO or a CEO, um, depending on how the company's ran. Um, this Sometimes, my uh, the way I look at it is uh, the sales team, they're, if they're doing the shipping, it's way easier uh, because they're not so much worried about the cost. They're right. more worried about the service to the customer. Service, yeah. Yeah. And the COO, they're definitely more worried about that bottom dollar. Their job is to save the company as much money as, as they can. So. Yeah, and they, they want to view you as a commodity. Is that? 
Yeah, uh, they do. They tend to view you more as a commodity than a, than a service. Um, you know, there's uh, a lot of different variations to what we do because, you know, there's so many different things that go into this business that, you know, you, it's not just one specific thing. So. And how do you differentiate yourself? That must be hard. It, it can be, uh, for me, it's, it's all about just being honest and open, um, showing just genuine interest in their products. You know, I try to find things that interest me and that I can get excited about internally and that I want to just learn about. Uh, and I guess that comes across in the phone calls, uh, definitely helps me to be excited just to learn about their product. And then they hear that and more than, more than not, they give me an opportunity. So, yeah. And is the phone your primary tool? Yeah, 90% uh, phone, 10% person. Um, I keep telling my boss that I need to get a private jet so that way we can fly around the country and I can make some, some in-person sales visits. But uh, yeah. with, He with just wants you to piggyback on one of those uh, tractor trailers, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, just sit in the back. You'll be fine. Yeah. The cell phone. <laughs> yep. We'll slow down to let you go off. <laughs> Tuck and roll. <laughs> Tuck and roll. <laughs> so the private jet thing didn't go over well, huh? No, no, it didn't go over well. So uh, uh, I mean, most of the most of the in-person sales happens locally in Kansas City. Uh, then anything outside of that, I'll set up like a Zoom call or something for and and just kind of do a one-on-one -on -one face to face with them. So yeah. And what? What kind of steps did you go through? Because it must have been hard. You probably didn't do phone sales before, did you? No, no. This was actually my uh, my very first sales position, uh, my yeah. one and only. So it it was a, a, a difficult transition from retail over into the phone sales. You know, in the beginning, I was extremely nervous. Um, you know, that just you always had that the butterflies in your gut trying to. Um, work up the courage, you know, because the, the, in the beginning, the worst thing that can happen is, you know, somebody tells you no, but uh, as long as you stick with it though, and, and you um, learn as much as you possibly can, and then you can just relay that, then people are generally pretty, pretty forthcoming and they're, they're generally pretty nice about giving you an opportunity, so. And what's your territory? Uh, it's the entire United States, uh, even Canada, um, you know, we, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, right now uh, we do a few projects. We worked on the LA Rams stadium, uh, the Google headquarters, um, supplying a lot of the materials to build those facilities up. Uh, we actually work with uh, doing a lot of work with the Tesla plan as well. So pretty cool. Nice. And did, did you have a mentor when you got started? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, my, my boss, Dave Keel, uh, was my mentor. Um, wonderful, wonderful man has taught me numerous, numerous things about this industry. Um, and he's, he's not your typical salesman. Uh, you know, he, he, he's driven trucks. He's worked on trucks, been ran over by trucks. Uh, <laughs> he, he's done it all. So, uh, um, he's taught me a lot about the industry and, and how to portray myself as you know, just an honest individual over the phone. And, um, like I said, in this industry, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys who will promise the world, but then they don't deliver. So right. we try to uh, caveat that and just be honest and t say, hey, I can't do that if I can't do it. So now with such a large territory, how do you prioritize things? <sighs> Honestly, that's probably one of my, my shortcomings. <laughs> oh. uh, you know, I, it's kind of a shotgun approach. Um, but if you, if you really, um, target, you know, your local area, that's where you see your most success. Yeah. Um, you know, cause you, you can actually get out, you can meet the people, um, you know, and there's, you know, a lot more about the area that you're in. So when I talk to somebody here in Kansas city, uh, you know, I can, I can talk to them about, you know, football and right. it just kind of relays back and forth and we just start talking and then it just the conversation never ends. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. Uh, and what have you learned over the, you know, three plus years you've been doing this? What was it like at first? What mistakes did you make? Uh, some of the biggest mistakes that I've made would be uh, not being able to say no, <laughs> not being able to walk away from a sale if it wasn't going to work out. Yeah. Um, 
you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, we are a business, so I have to make something. And in the beginning, uh, I wasn't like that. I was, you know, hey, if I break even on something, you know, nowadays it's, it's, I have to at least make something on it. So that would be my biggest mistake from when I first started. But a lot of things that I've learned is just, um, you know, how to, um, you know, just continuing on with my um, role in learning how to deal with diversity when it comes about, you know, there's a lot of problems that can arise in the transportation industry at the drop of a hat, whether it's a hurricane that comes through or, uh, you know, DOT guy decides that he's going to stop one of my trucks and inspect it. So um, there's just uh, numerous things that can happen and just dealing with that diversity has definitely helped me a lot. Yeah. And so what other things do you wish you knew three years ago that you know now? Oh, um, I wish I knew how fun this job was. Uh, yeah, that would be Where's probably the fun. Tell me where the fun is. Oh man, I, I wake up every day. I'm excited to come to work. I love my job. And, yeah. uh, yeah, it's, it's probably the best job I've ever had the sales. Um, it's exciting. You know, you, I still get that rush every day and, um, but things that I wish I would have learned, you know, in the beginning was, you know, just how to navigate, you know, the corporate structure of things, you know, um, finding the right decision maker. I feel like back then it would have helped me a lot more um, actually knowing how to navigate that, maybe having a little bit of sales training in my background. But uh, like I said, my boss, he's, he's really implemented a really good training program and has helped me along the way. And I've been pretty successful. So. And what excites you about that? Um, I would say it's just, you know, the, the, I don't even know how to describe it, man. Is it closing Honestly. deals? Is it building the it's company? The or? It, it's the hunt. Yeah. The hunt excites me. Um, you know, the, 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 the process of, you know, just calling somebody and not knowing if they're going to say yes, you know, it's, it's always that, that mindset in the back of my head that's, is this person going to say yes? So yes, yeah, it's, it's always closing, closing accounts, closing deals, uh, definitely would be the big thing. So the challenge of it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And where does that come from? Did uh, I think it's just my competitive nature. Um, you know, I played football uh, in high school and uh, then, you know, I was very competitive in the military and then continued on in, the, in my adult life. And in retail, you don't really get a chance to be competitive. You just get told what to do and how to do it. So, uh, but with this position, I can, I can definitely be more competitive. And, really and, and what do you see as competition? Is it the other transportation companies or is it just them saying no or not now? Or I would say uh, my biggest competition is, uh, you know, other transportation companies, but at the same time, it's myself, you know, um, you know, you can only go as high as you're willing to let yourself go. So um, I always try to challenge myself each and every day to do better than the day I did prior. Yeah. And uh, if I just keep that mentality and that mindset and I challenge myself to get better every day, then I feel like I have an un unlimited potential. So, and, and how do you keep track of that? Or how do you measure that? Is it just a, a feeling or is it, do you count things? Is it commission? Is it, I would say the biggest thing would be commission. You know, yeah. the the more I commission and the, the more I see those numbers roll in, then the, the more successful and the more I feel like I've done better. Yeah. Um, you know, when the commissions are down, then, you know, I'm, I'm back into it and I'm like, man, what am I doing? I need to, I need to step up my game. And then I just try to keep the ball rolling. So. And this is probably the first job you've had that's been commission. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And what was that like when you got your first check or first sizable check? Uh, it was, it was eye opening, you know, for, to say the least, you know, uh, I, I never imagined with, without a college de degree, I could make the money that I'm making now. Um, when I first started, I actually took a, a pretty big pay cut to jump into sales. Um, but it wasn't too long before I eclipsed that number. And then it's like, Oh, wow, I, I, I can do this, you know, and, it's, it's definitely a good feeling when you can say, Hey, you know, I don't have to kill myself at a retail store anymore. I can, 
I can do what I love to do and I can make a great living in it. So that's it. Because a lot of people think that that, uh, you know, cut and base salary is, is too painful, but it usually only takes a month or two and then you're crushing it and you're like, yeah. you don't even think about your base salary anymore. Yeah. Nope. Nope. It's, it's, it, it, it's kind of weird because, you know, when you first start, you're right, you know, there's so much focus on that base salary. And then from that point on, it's once you start seeing those commission checks roll in, it's like, oh, man, I don't even care about that. I want more. I want more of these commission checks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember getting the first sizable one and it, it is kind of life changing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is, you know, it's, it's allowed me to do things for, for me and my family that I never thought I'd be able to do. We're actually, in the process right now of buying our first house. So it's, it's really amazing. Hard to do that on a retail salary, huh? Yeah. <laughs> possible, but hard. <laughs> possible, but you're going to live paycheck to paycheck. So. Yeah. so you feel more in control of your destiny? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, where, wherever I want to go um, is definitely up to me and how much effort I put into my, my day. So yeah. And, and what about it motivates? Is it winning or the hatred of losing? I would say the hatred of losing. I hate yeah. to lose. Um, I'm competitive, like I said, by nature. And um, the worst feeling that I feel is, is losing. And uh, just the internal drive to never experience that feeling is, is what motivates me every day to just keep going and keep pushing. So. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I always see, and in, in great salespeople, there's got to be an emotional connection to selling. They got to yeah. care. And that caring can come from a lot of different areas. But if they don't care, they've got the retail mindset, the salary, the, the employee mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Versus the entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah, definitely. Um, emotional selling, you know, if you can, if you can attach an emotion to something you're going to sell and you're going to come off way more authentic and way more genuine. Uh, and, and that just opens up so many different doors because there's so many people out there that have that retail mindset. They're reading from a script, uh, you know, and they're, they're just going one step by one step. They don't ever try to think outside the box. So um, if you get an opportunity to, to be able to do that, then, you know, take advantage of it and, and run with it. You know, it, it's going to do great things. So, yeah. and that sports background seems to be pretty consistent with great salespeople. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, I mean, uh, my boss, he, he played football when he was younger uh, and so many different salespeople that I've met now, um, they have done some sort of, you know, a, extracurricular activity, whether it was, you know, sports or even debate club, you know, just something that involved competition, you know, it definitely does increase that, that personality trait and really drives them to continue on. So. And that's it, because it doesn't have to be sports. It could be like the debating, that's a performance. You're competing yeah. against somebody. You have to take coaching and feedback. Mm -hmm. You can't be a little snowflake and, you know, go, go home crying. You have to, <laughs> you know, Hey, don't do it this way. Do it this way. And knowing yeah. that that person is right. Exactly. You know, I mean, there's, there's so many people that can, can teach you something. And, um, you know, the day that you stop learning is, is the day that you stop growing. So, uh, you know, if, as long as you're willing to take that feedback and, and really listen, then, you know, you always have the opportunity to continue to progress in whatever you're doing. So, yeah, because I mean, we we get feedback from the market all the time, all day long. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get feedback. It's, <laughs> I get feedback on both ends. So I get you feedback <laughs> from from the from the truckers' standpoint, and then I also get feedback from the customers' standpoint, from the manufacturers' standpoint. So you know, they're and they're generally at, end, at ends with each other. They don't ever see eye to eye on it. So um, yeah, I mean, you definitely get feedback from the market, and that plays a role in it. So. And the kind of the sports or the performance thing also has that characteristic of nothing's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I There's mean, no perfect football game, right? No, no, 
there's there's always going to be something that's thrown in the mix that catches you off guard it's like whoa you know it makes you take a step back and yeah. it really makes you look at things from a different perspective and try to attack it in a different way so yeah versus like either like a mathematical or an accounting where it's either right or it's wrong yeah yeah very very analytical things are either black or white and it's right. You know, uh, I guess that's why, you know, you, you don't always get along with the accountants at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. And they don't understand sales because, you know, because I talk to, you talk to a lot of CEOs who typically are engineers and they're yeah. like, just show, get me somebody who can sell. Yeah. Well, that means different things in different markets. Like, I mean, if you went from selling transportation to something else, there'd be a transition period. Yeah, yeah, there there would be. Likewise, somebody moving into your space, you know, that they wouldn't. It, it's awkward. It's yeah. different. And, and transportation sales are very unique because you know, like I mentioned before, you you don't just have to sell yourself to a manufacturer. You have to sell yourself to a trucking company to be able to pick up the the shipment and you know stay in communication with you through the whole process. So every sale is essentially two sales. So. Right. It's, you're, you're in the middle. So it's yep. double sided, a lot like a recruiter. Exactly. Right. Where you have supply and demand and everyone's fussy except for you. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you don't get the right to be fussy. Nope. Nope. I, I have the right to say, okay, I'll get it done or, you know, I'll it's fix not a match. it. Yeah. yeah. So. And how do you differentiate yourself and your company? Um, so, um, the way I differentiate myself normally, um, is like I said, I, I just try to be as genuine as possible. Um, I, I try to relay information. You know, I walk into a situation, I'm not ever expecting a sale. I just want to give them information, you know, Hey, have you ever thought of doing it this way? This way may, may be better for you. Um, and just try and provide a solution for them. Uh, and not a lot of people do that in this industry. So everybody's all about the, about the next sale, about what they the can pitch. do. Yeah. All about the pitch. Yeah. Um, I have, I have trucking companies that call me all the time, um, you know, and they, they try to pitch me on adding, adding them to my network. And I'm like, eh, let's, let's, let's hold off on that for a little right. bit. Right. You're so, not in market. Yeah. You know, so, if you're in market, you might listen to the pitch. Now that's what people don't understand. They just try and make the pitch more and more compelling. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you don't know, like, or trust them, it's a commercial. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't turn the TV on to hear a commercial. Nope. No, nope, you don't you know, you generally skip through the ads. <laughs> right. That's what people don't understand. How do you keep your game going, getting better and better? Is there a certain uh, system? Uh, it's, it's, it's all about learning. Um, you know, I, I watch a lot of different sales techniques and a lot of different videos, read books and, and just try to, you know, expand my, uh, my viewpoint of everything in general. You know, if there's a particular customer that I want to go about, you know, then I do as much research on them as possible and just learn about their industry, about their products. Um, and then that, that just progresses, uh, you know, it just directly relates over to the successes in, in sales, you know, so. Yeah. And have you come up with a, a daily routine or a method around it or is it as time allots? Uh, yeah. So daily routine, generally you come in and you'll, you know, sit down and start answering emails right off the bat. You know, you start getting emails at five in the morning. Sometimes you have to wake up early and answer those. And, um, you know, then from that point on, once all the fires are put out in the morning, then you just kind of move on to the prospecting side of things and just get back into, you know, trying to, you know, research and find the next, the next company that you feel like you can help. So. Yeah. And how many calls do you make a day? Uh, I would say anywhere between 50 and a hundred. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's on a good day. <laughs> um, you know, I would say probably average is in between 30 and 50 a day. Oh. Like actual good conversations, you know, that are, you know, could, could turn into something down the road. So. Yeah. And do you have other salespeople in the office? Yeah. Uh, we have, we're a pretty small office. So we only have four other people in the whole office that do sales besides me and the boss. Yeah. And, do you collaborate with them or do you play off of them or? Yeah, we get together, 
every week uh, we do like a, a group meeting and we bounce ideas off of each other, brainstorm, you know, hey, you know, how, how, how did you get through this, uh, you know, objection? You know, how did you get through, through this problem? You know, and then we just kind of bounce ideas back and forth off of each other and, and see what comes about and see if somebody has a better idea about how to go about it. So. And how do you keep the, the momentum and the enthusiasm up? Like if you get a hang up or you get somebody rude? Uh, you know, for me, I just shake it off. You know, I have real thick skin. It's nothing like a drill sergeant yelling at me. So <laughs> I, <laughs> you're used uh, to it. Huh? I'm not a snowflake, so I can handle somebody being rude. But I, uh, I, I would say that the best way that I would get through it is, or that I would relate it to my team to get through it is to just talk about it um, and then find the, the, the best way to go through the objection. Uh, we had an objection or a meeting yesterday and one of our sales guys, he was talking about an objection about getting somebody to give him a call back from leaving a voicemail. Um, and I gave him some pointers on, on how to do it. And then he, he called me back this morning and he said, Hey man, I left three voicemails and I got three return calls yesterday. That was awesome. So, um, it's all about just, you know, um, keeping an open mind and, and really listening to, you know, other people because your method may not always be the best method. So. Yeah. And what did you recommend as far as leaving a voicemail? For me, I always try to just leave a, a very vague voicemail. Um, something, about something that I was always taught. Now, I don't know if this relates across sales in general, but um, is if you, if you leave somebody asking questions with that voicemail and you say, you know, hey, who is that? What did he want? You know, why did he call me? Then you're gonna get a better chance for them to call you back and ask what, what, was, what, what did you need, so. Some kind of curiosity or? Yeah, it, it definitely piques curiosity with people, you know, as, as humans, you know, we, we have the need when somebody asks us a question, we always feel the need to try to answer it with our own opinion. Um, and so it's, it's very rare where you get somebody, if you ask them a question where they don't feel like they want to answer it. Yeah. So. And what are the transportation people want? What, what, what are their buttons? Um, Generally, it's always cost. It's, it's always about cost. You know, the, they're trying to move their product as efficiently and as cheaply as possible. Um, so that's one of their big buttons. Another thing is just communication through the whole process. Service, yeah. Yeah, service level. Um, that, those are pretty much, you know, one or the other when it comes to the transportation industry. Either they're more focused on cost or they're more focused on service. And if you can figure out which pain point they're having the, the most problem with, you know, then you can always try to focus on that and try to build a need based off of that and say, you know, yeah. what, well, Hey, but you're probably not the cheapest, right? No, I always go into a sale and I always explain to them, Hey, I'm, I'm not going to be your cheapest option by far. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a fair price, but I'm going to give you the best service you're going to get for the price. Um, you know, they always say you get what you pay for. Uh, and if, if you go with the cheapest guy, well, you're, you're going to get the cheapest service, you know? Right. So I always just try to relay that in the beginning and generally it's, it comes across, you know, and they, they understand that the service level is, is there. So. Yeah. Cause I remember I ran a shipping department when I was in high school and we, we went cheap and the thing yeah. showed up broken. So yeah. it wasn't that cheap. <laughs> <laughs> no, not when you have damages. Not when you no. have damages. Uh, show up and something's broken in half or a pallet's completely destroyed. Yeah. yeah. And if you can get people focused on the total cost, not just the, the shipping cost. Well, yeah, because I mean, a lot of people don't realize the cost of, of a, a truckload of material. I mean, even a, even a truckload of golf balls is going to cost a fortune. You know, so if, if you show up and half the truckload is completely destroyed, well, that just costs the company, you know, a lot, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on what you're, what you're shipping. So if, if you, you have a reputable company that you can trust to get it delivered without damages, then, you know, that's, you know, definitely where it kind of plays into that. And you can build the, the value off of that and say, well, yeah. I, I'm not going to cost you a hundred thousand dollars. It's just going to cost you, you know, X amount of dollars to ship it from here to here. So. Cool. 
And, you know, for all the people listening who need some shipping res- services, who should they contact? Oh, uh, they can co- contact me directly. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Adam Odell uh, at link on LinkedIn. Uh, I have a Twitter uh, at Odell Adam. Uh, and they can also find my uh, website, armstrongtransportkc.com.